going on, everyone? And welcome back to Nerd Made by Faith. I know it has been a minute, and I said this show was going to be every single day, but I'm going to tell you right now, God is working miracles right now. So it's a little bit hard to get on here every single day, but it will work out eventually. Uh, there's some new, there's some new bueno people subscribe to the channel. I want to go ahead and give them a shout out, and that's going to be part of what I'm talking about today. Uh, we're at 1,152 subscribers as of this morning. Uh, that's only been in a couple of days, and I think that's pretty amazing. You might notice too that I am not recording this with my webcam because I'm just like, I don't want to get a whole lot into the hassle right now but and there are a couple of scriptures i want to put up on the screen today and i don't want to fight da vinci and uh there, there's a lot of things i need to upgrade my computer at some point but that's not where we're at right now so we got to work with what we got um but i wanted to go ahead and say that this real quick is sponsored by ulti energy uh if you want to go ahead and try out their product i recommend it uh if you're looking for a new energy thing in the morning it is 8 23 in the morning you know i i kind of need some myself uh you know waiting for that first shipment to get here and uh you know we could try it together but i definitely recommend to go check them i just give them a try uh if you want to and you're, you're unsure about it you can always use our promo code tyler b182 um Link in the description of the video, uh, not of the podcast, uh, but of the video um, on YouTube. Go give them a try. But anyways, today we are talking about faith and miracles because I'm going to tell you guys right now, this weekend, yesterday, Sunday, July 16th, God did work. Now, it may not be a big thing to a lot of people, uh, but to me, it's extraordinary. Uh, a lot of you may not know. Some of you may know if you've been following the channel and I've talked about it. Uh, I am currently unemployed. I have been unemployed since June 2nd. Um, there, I kind of want to go into that real quick. That's very important to this. And So, I was working for a travel company. Not a travel agency, but just like a travel company. Won't go into it. I'm sure you've seen it on my cup before. If you've seen me drink from my cup, um, it's on there. But there's nothing wrong with the company, so I'm not bashing them. There were just some choices made um, that were getting very stressful for me. Uh, we, we went into a three-month training program for this department. It's a newer department, and um, it was to deal with high-end calls. So high-end, uh, you know, premium members. During that time, I faced a lot of anxiety. Not from the job itself, but from other things. I learned that I've got separation anxiety from my wife. I learned that um, I had some slight health issues when it came to uh, going to the bathroom when it came to getting up in the morning there there was a lot of stress induced uh, things going on so I, I missed some of the training but I, I made it through uh, according to what my supervisor told me I was one of the top people in the class which was great you know it was great it wasn't a bad job it just it wasn't for me well we get out of training and a couple weeks later the supervisor we had been training with was supposed to be our main supervisor but she ends up going to nights and we get Divided, the team gets divided, and we get some new, you know, temporary supervisors. It's kind of when things started to go downhill. Um, my doctor didn't feel it was appropriate to get things accommodated, and um, like he just felt like basically what was happening is I was having flare ups where I would have to go to the restroom. And with a, if you've ever worked call centers, they want you to stay on the computer. Eight hours a day, you do get your 30 minute lunch break and you get two 15s. But when you've got stomach issues, you can't guarantee when it's going to flare up. And so they only offer 10 minutes of bathroom break time for the whole day. And if you had to go any longer, you had to tell your supervisor. Well, I would. I'd let her know what was going on. And then she got her boss involved. And they had a sit down meeting with me. <laughs> and, uh,. And basically, her boss was like, look, man, I get it. You've got health problems, but you got to tell your doctor you need that accommodation note or there's going to be some problems. And so it, it didn't feel good. 
and I noticed my spirit was starting to, you know, you know, kind of sway more and more and more to leaving. And one morning I woke up and it was like my spirit had left my body and was like, bro, I'm not doing this today. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. God is calling us somewhere else, somewhere greater, and it's not here. And so I did something I never thought I would do, and I'm, I'm not bragging about it because it, professionally it's not a good thing. But I texted my supervisor and said, I'm sorry, I'm quitting today. I said, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Uh, just health wise, I've, I've got a, I can't do it. So they weren't mad. They worked with me and turned my stuff back in. Everything was fine. But through that, for the first month, I was rekindling with my best friends. It's crazy. In June of 2023, I had my three best friends back in my life. I had Kevin, I had Quentin, and I had Michael. If you guys, most of you guys probably don't know, but uh, Kevin and Quentin, they're the guys who started me. You know, the three of us started YouTube. Kevin was on first, and then he brought me in, and then we brought Quentin in, and it like that's how this whole thing happened. And Michael, I met Michael on a on a web series I was on, and we became instant buddies, and we we do music together. You know, if you watch the Phasmo videos or you watch the Phasmo streams. Michael and Quentin are the ones I play with. And um, it's like, God was like, you're not meant, if you're going to sit behind a desk, you're going to do it the way you want to. It has been a struggle. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's it's been a tough time. It's been a very, very, very big, tough time. Um my wife is now on a journey. Uh, she works for a preschool now because, you know, she wants to concentrate on TikTok. Uh, but sometimes she wants to teach too. Like it, it keeps popping back up constantly of teaching and teaching and teaching and, and, and reaching younger, you know, you know, young kids and whatnot. And, you know, just being that positive change for them. And so she's kind of struggling with that right now. You know, we're scheduling things out. But the thing, the thing is, um, here we are, mid-July. In that time, from June till now, I, with the power of God, <laughs> I have written a script. I have written a musical. And for some, people who know me, they know that's, that's not a, a big shock. Since 2021, I've been able to write a musical in a day. I know a lot of y'all ask, how do you do that? How do you do that? Like, how do you write the music? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Our musicals are mixtape musicals. And what that means is we work with other producers to make the beats or the tracks. I write all the lyrics and the melodies. Um, and I write the script. And we, my wife goes through and she reads it. She edits it. She'll let me know if she needs, we need to add something. And then we workshop it for about two months and then we put the show on uh and currently we're doing a show called behind the line and um through this journey god has talked to me now he is he has talked to me and he's like this is it this is it this is where you're headed right right now right now this is your purpose in life and, and i say it like that because yesterday in church uh the uh our church is on a mission trip right now so our head pastor's gone our, our worship pastor so our, our our youth pastor had to like lead sermon yesterday and it was really good and he had talked about purpose and how our purpose can can change through seasons and right now this is what god is telling me this is your purpose i'll provide this is your purpose when I was about to quit YouTube here pretty recently, just because of the negativity and all of that, God provided. 
That's that's how I was going at the beginning with the, the subscribers, man. Well, I was at a plateau of one thousand one hundred and forty four subscribers, and it went down to one thousand one hundred and forty two. And it went down to 41. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Last Monday, I was like, God, what do I do? Was it Monday? Or Tuesday? Last Tuesday. It's like, God, what do I do? And he spoke to my wife. He spoke to Pastor Stephen Furtick. He spoke through the, the devotionals that I've been reading. And I came down, sat down in my office, and I just cried. I cried and said, God, use me. This is what I want. I want to reach people on YouTube. I want to reach them through theater. I don't care what it takes. God, use me to reach people. And I cried. And that couple hours passed. Went back to, went to my bedroom. I cried some more. <laughs> and the last week I was like, I'm getting back in here and I'm working. And here we are. We went from 1,144 because it went back up and it kept going. And now we're at 1,152. I know it's not a big number. I know it's not a big number. But for me, someone who thought they reached a plateau, thought that they were irrelevant, thought that they couldn't do anything. They had quit their job with no backup, with no savings in the bank. They had quit their job because... Their spirit said, I'm done. God works miracles. Now, fast forward to this weekend, uh, a couple weeks ago, actually, my buddy Quentin. I'm going back to that real quick. My buddy Quentin, <laughs> for the last year, has told me to get into church come back to church come to abundant life and for a year I said no why there's a lot of factors there but at the end of the day I got to take accountability for it it's just because I was lazy I didn't want to I was afraid my wife was afraid but I said pretty recently I said I'm going to lead this family spiritually and she was down with it. So we started to read. We started to watch Elevation Elevation Church. And we are really getting back into the Word. And I said, let's go to Abundant Life. And she was a little hesitant. And I said, I need the fellowship. I need the people. We got God, but now we need people to back us up. And so we went. And automatically met people. <laughs> and we, we went. And then she got sick the next weekend. So I went by myself. Went up and got it. And, you know, went up to the altar call. They prayed over me. Tried to find work. Or whatever purpose God is calling me to. And then that's whenever, like, yo, Tuesday happened. I was down in the dumps. And then this Sunday, this Sunday, we had, I had, I had called to extend some of our bills and utilities said, Hey, we can only extend it out a week. And this, this was a uh, Friday, the seventh, I think. Yeah. Friday the seventh. And the, the, the thing is, I'm sorry. <laughs> the thing is, I called Friday the seventh. He said, "I said, can I extend it out a week?" He said, "Yeah, we'll make sure you know your cutoff is the 17th. This week goes on. This past week goes on, and we get up to Thursday or Friday, 
and it hits me. I'm like, oh, no utilities are due. My mom had just helped me with rent. My mother-in-law helped me with rent. Both of them did. Uh, in doing that, it put my mom financially in the hole. Not by much, but it did. To where she, you know, she gets paid this week and she's fine, but she helped me. And I was like, I was like, mom, is there any way, like, you know, you can write me a, you know, a check or whatever? She's like, I don't have any money. You're going to have to ask your dad. I love my father. I love my father to pieces. My my dad has a hard time with money. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, he has a hard time with, you know, kind of, you know, helping out whenever we need it. It's either, you know, they don't have it or whatever. And, and you know, that's, that's their thing. I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the thing is, I was, I was scared because I hadn't heard from my dad. I, I texted him and said, hey, dad, our, our lights are going to go out Monday if we don't pay it Sunday. I hadn't heard anything. I had just talked to him about my sister's birthday dinner for Sunday or for Sunday night, but we hadn't talked about anything. Uh, we had like, it didn't hit my mom was on the phone. So I texted him afterwards. Right. And my dad doesn't check his phone. <laughs> my, my dad's awful at it. He does not see text messages. He, you know, he just doesn't see it. And, uh, so I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom. I know this is a 16 minute setup, but just listen. I'm in the bathroom. I'm scrolling through TikTok, and all of a sudden, God is like, and I want to say it's God. Yeah, you because know, it, sometimes it's hard. You know, you, you it's either your own mind telling you this or God is, but I'm telling you, it was God. It was like, put the phone down. So I, I you know, locked it, stopped looking at TikTok, and I put the phone down. And I started praying. I was like, God. I don't know how I'm going to pay this utility bill. I pray that whatever medium you have to to come in and help us, whether it's my dad or somebody that we don't know, maybe someone at church. But I I don't know what to do. And so I text Quentin. I said, look, man, we I, our light's going to be off on, on Monday. I don't know what to do. Can you guys pray for us? He said, we'll pray, but I think you need to take it to the altar on Sunday morning. I said, man, I'm afraid to do that, man. I'm afraid to keep like saying, hey, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for this. I don't want to be a broken record. He said, God doesn't care. God doesn't care if you're a broken record. If you're still struggling with it, go to him about it. So we go to church. And this is the crazy part. This is the crazy part. Uh, we go to church. And all morning, I, I wake up, and all morning, I keep thinking of uh, our small group leader, Kenzie. And I'm like, okay, Kenzie typically does altar call. I'm going to go up there, and I'm going to have him pray for me. And, and maybe, just maybe he can talk to the head pastor, and maybe they can help us out. Like, that's where my brain was going, right? Like, like, like oh, oh, I know how God's going to articulate this. Like, I, I, know, I know how he's going to make this happen. He's, he's going to, the church is going to donate the money for us to get our utilities paid. So, we get the church. Man, we get there early. You know, first service is, is just ending. And, um... So people walk out and whatnot. You know, we we got like 15 minutes till the second service, and um, we all sit down. Uh, no, before that, um, Quentin's wife Rochelle comes up, um, gives Serena a hug. We talk, and she's like, "Oh yeah, the youth is you know the prayer team this morning." And my heart just sank. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, oh." okay and then I was like hey Serena you want to go find a seat so we go in we sit down and service starts I'm looking around the sanctuary not a whole lot of people there yet they're all they're all they'll file in later but at first it was very barren there I'm looking around where's Kinsey I don't see Kinsey like something is telling me Kinsey is the one I need to go to nobody else will fix this Kinsey is the one I need to go to don't know why, but that is what God was telling me. Go to Kinsey. So music starts, worship starts. We start singing, and I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. I'm raising my hands. I'm feeling. I'm feeling God. And something amazing happened to Serena too. And I'll come back to that. Let me that down. It's gonna be a long episode. Just so you know. <laughs> Sorry. 
Serena. Okay. I wrote that down. So, the third worship song starts. My eyes are open. And to, to my left is um, this guy named Jay. Jay's very nice. Real, very, very supportive guy. And uh, I see Kenzie walk up next to Jay. And Kenzie, Kenzie looks back at me. And, like, we just, you know, like, hey, man, what's up? Like, like that kind of thing. But it was silent, of course, the worship's going on. And he goes and sits in front. And we finish worship. Trey, the youth pastor, goes up there, starts it, starts the stuff, and he says, uh, "If you're wearing a blue shirt, if, if, you, if you're part of prayer team, they raise your hand or stand up." And I see Kenzie stand up. I'm like, oh, "No." So we go through service, and service is all about purpose and relevance. And it hit me very hard. I, I was crying the the whole day. I was crying <laughs> um, because it hit. It hit very hard but then the worship team goes back up there (laughs) Trey's finishing up has the prayer team go up there I grab Serena's hand while Trey is praying and I go up to Kenzie and uh, and I say look can you pray for a job for me also our lights are getting cut off tomorrow and he just prayed over us I was crying there was so much pride in me that I was letting go admitting how how weak I felt that I was failing my family that our lights were going to be cut off and he prayed for a while over Serena and I and afterwards he looked at me and said how much do you need I said I, it's only about a hundred It's I know it's not a whole lot but you know that's we don't really have anything right now he said i'll talk to you later so we you know we go visit with quentin and his family tell people bye when i and we head home and when i get home i text him i say hey i just want to let you know it's about 101 that is due today um i'm not sure how much you know, we're behind two months and uh he said well what 100 what the 101 you know keep the lights on for now i said yeah and he's like, where can I send the money to? God did not do this miracle the way I thought he was going to. <laughs> Kinsey, out of his own, his own pocket, paid for it. I said, you didn't have to do that. He said, I felt God was leading me to do that today. It is amazing how God works. And like I said, it's not a big thing for some people, but for me, it was a huge thing. You know, we're, you know, we're struggling right now. You know, so, you know, Serena's still waiting for her first paycheck. And so we've had to rely on family. We've had to rely on friends for like gas money. Like we've had to rely on a lot of people to get us through this time of okay you know it's <laughs> a time of uncertainty you know and um and it's just amazing what what he can do whenever you pour your life into him what he puts back out for you and that's what we've been talking about at church and so today after 23 minutes uh and i'm gonna tell you about what happened to serena as well um yesterday but we are we are we're we're talking about miracles and how God works through us and provides and, and I'm sure you're questioning like what does it have to do with nerd? I have a story for you. <laughs> like I said, it's gonna be a long episode. So uh, real quick, what happened to Serena? We were in worship, and Serena's got got a, a past with the church. She. She uh, grew up Baptist and was constant. Her and her mom were constantly shunned from the church. Like she, they always felt like outcasts and never felt they were part of it. Uh, Serena won a scholarship to go out to L.A. to pursue acting. And these older ladies at her church made her feel awful about it because uh, she was leaving her mom here and they're struggling. And how can she afford to go out there? Yada, yada, yada. And this was a gift that God had given her so she could go pursue it 
and that's always kind of stuck with her. It's just the way that the churches have treated her in the past. And, and there's a lot of people that way. But during worship yesterday, she said it felt like somebody came up behind me and hugged me and told me that they love me. And she was like, it could have been dad. It could have been grandma. I said, it could have been Jesus. How did it feel? And well, I didn't ask her that part, but she told me how it felt. And she said it felt warm. I said, that's, that's God. She's like, I've never felt him before like that. And I said, because you've never fully let him in. You know, I woke up this morning. First time in a while that I've not had a, a dream that's really like thrown me off. It was a very positive dream. And when I woke up at like six o'clock this morning, I was like, I'm motivated. I'm motivated to get work done. That's why I'm yawning, by the way. Um, but let's go ahead and look at this, man. Uh, so we're going to start. Uh, I got a couple of verses here. And then we're going to jump into our core, you know, what's connecting it to the nerd verse. But we're looking at Acts chapter three, verse 16. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of all of you of you all sorry i said that backwards uh, so the thing is the thing is faith is a number one component faith is number one component because that's the thing man once you once you know god once you know jesus you know, all you got to do is go up and talk to him like that that was the thing that kept getting pounded in my head through this whole thing was pray Go talk to him. You know, we're, we're reading right now a devotional with our buddy Kevin. Um, it's like a 14-day prayer, like wild prayer devotional. And that's that's what it is. Like, it, at first it talks about prayers for yourself and then prayers for others. And, you know, that that is our biggest connection. But so besides the word, that's our biggest connection to God himself is just talking and praying and just letting him know your thoughts. He already knows. But the thing is, you got to get it out there, right? It's like, it's like I, I know why my wife is mad, but I need her to tell me why she's mad. So I know, you know, so there, there is a common ground there. Um, the next thing is Matthew 17, 20. For I truly tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say this to this mountain. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you you know you know you know moving mountains man like um, uh, there's a song by Alex Bouye uh, called impossible or anything impossible uh, and that's kind of the chorus I can walk on water I can come to rage and see move every mountain in my life because I know that you're with me you know like turn water into wine no anyways <laughs> i love this song um but that that's the thing man like we can move mountains in our lives through faith because jesus is the one who does it god is the one who does it man like they oh it, it, it's faith you you would think faith is not strong right if you, you would think just believing in something it shouldn't affect your life, but it does so, 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 so much. And we'll talk about that today when we get to who we're talking about. I don't want to get into it just yet. Uh, then we'll move on to Luke eighteen twenty seven, And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. But he said, oh, is it just repeating? <laughs> this is these are different translations. So, uh, and he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So, Exactly, like, because people put faith in people. Like, for a long time, my wife put faith in people, and that's why she kept getting burned all the time. People aren't, I don't want to say people are evil, but people are flawed. They are fallacies. People, people will, will fail, even with the best intentions. Because, you know, we're not perfect. Even though we need people to, you know, be around us and support us and back us up, you know, God at the end of the day is the one that we got to like really put, you know, put that faith into and just be like, look, man, I need you. I need you, man. It reminds me of what's going on right now. Personally, like my, me and a, a friend of mine, I, he got me a job a couple years ago 
and I was at the job for a couple months and the thing was it was tearing a hole in my marriage I had to get up super early hours I had to go to bed super early hours and it just wasn't working we never saw each other um, <clears throat> we never saw each other uh, she saw her friend well our friend but she spent time with our friend more than she spent time with me and that started to mess with the relationship he didn't do anything but it really started to put a tear in there where she started to rely on him and almost started to make him a replacement husband because I wasn't around. Uh, there were some health concerns too. Um, like I was waking up every morning with like some weird like chest pains and it was just like, it, it just was not. And then I got sick too. I got, I got sick pretty bad while I was there, but, it, and, and I didn't feel welcome, but it was just not conducive. And God dropped something in my lap. It was a stepping stone, but it was temporary. And it was like, here's a job. I know you've wanted it. Here it is. It'll get you through the next year. I'm like, okay. You start today. <laughs> it's like, oh, hold on. And that's, that's what happened. My buddy Daniel called me. He said, hey, I'm moving to being the manager of this gelato shop. The doctor who owns it needs a new assistant since I'm moving here. Do you want it? If so, you start today. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I've been wanting this job. It was less pay, but it was more freedom. It was less pay, but allowed me to see my wife. It was less pay, but it allowed me to do the things that I wanted to do. That that I felt called to. And that's why we were able to do our last show last year was because of it. <clears throat> you know, um... It was just this, this crazy, this crazy thing. But in doing so, I had to quit the job that day. And so I, I text my, my supervisor. I was like, hey, look, I've just been offered another job that starts today. I have to quit. He said, well, good luck to you, man. Little did I know my friend who got me the job found out, got mad, and has held a grudge for over a year about it. <clears throat> and uh, in his mind because I let him down and it kind of goes back to what I'm saying the things which are impossible with men are impossible sorry the things that are, which are impossible with men are possible with God you know we can't I will say to myself I'm, I'm flawed and one of the biggest flaws used to be just commitment not commitment to my wife but commitment to work if it wasn't writing a show or youtube or music i didn't commit and because it's not where my spirit was it wasn't it, it wasn't where i felt i was needed to go it wasn't where god was calling me but it was where i was at that certain time and um and so i a friendship you know almost got ruined that way and i'm hoping to rekindle it but i know my flaws I, I don't know if he knows his there, there's more to it than that but uh, yeah I don't know where I was going with that that's the, but that's what that reminded me of but we're going to get to our what does this have to do with the nerd realm I know what y'all are asking so we're going to look at this miracles are possible I want us to we're going we're gonna to look over at Power Rangers today there's one I've been really wanting to jump into because it is one of my fortes um, but let's look how this thing starts man Power Rangers is full of miracles it's full of miracles man um, there are several miracles throughout the, the original series and we're going to start <clears throat> from the beginning with Day of the Dumpster when Rita came and attacked <clears throat> people had no idea what was going on people running in fear and Zordon, Zordon picked these five random teens to step up and, you know, become, you know, these defenders. And he he talks to them, tells them, hey, here's all your power. You know, here's your powers. You'll be the Power Rangers and whatnot. Um, the, the issue that happens. I apologize. Hold on. The issue that happens is they all are very doubtful. They become Thomas <laughs> and they, uh, they're very doubtful 
they end up leaving with the power coins anyways in the morphers uh and then they get attacked and just out of uh, just out of faith jason's like you know zordon said this would give us power let's do it and they morph and they become the power rangers and they end up you know kicking butt until Goron decides to leave because he's a coward which is what what the enemy does <laughs> um but if it wasn't for the faith, and this is this is why I say Jason is one of the greatest, if not the greatest Red Ranger of all time. Jason had so much blind faith. He had so much blind faith in the cause and his team in Zordon. He, in my opinion, people say Tommy is, but Jason had the heart and soul. Even in the comics today, Jason, in my opinion, is still the greatest Ranger of all time just for those those merits alone with a couple more but uh <clears throat> that blind faith that goes back to through faith in the name of jesus we'll go back to it yeah and his name by faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see now and the faith that is through jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all and that's that's what i'm saying if jason didn't have the faith they would have been probably killed by the putties <laughs> uh but let's move on forward uh this goes back to jason as well when tommy ends up becoming the green ranger and becoming evil it is through it is through jason's faith that and people always say that Jason didn't best Tommy in that fight he just destroyed the sword of darkness he got that's a, that's a best thing um but Jason was able to save his friend through faith. And then afterwards, they accepted him in, which is very close to, to Paul. I don't think we finished, did we? No, we did not. We did not get to Acts. This guy I'm talking about Tommy brings me here. God did powerful and extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul. This is Acts 19, 11 through 12. So that when handkerchiefs and aprons, so that when handkerchiefs and aprons, aprons that had touched his flesh were brought to the sick their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them that essentially is what ends up happening with with tommy as the series progresses every ranger that he runs into you know he affects in some way right um i like to think of this is gonna sound weird but i like to think of jason as the peter of of power rangers and i like to think of tommy as the the paul of power rangers um and so it, it, it's very interesting to, to think of it that way. But that that's really where it comes at is, you know, Peter had so much faith in Jesus. Like he wa he wanted to be so much like him, Christ. Like he did fail. I mean, he 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 uh, denied him three times, but he also was the one to walk on water for a brief second there. You know, I think out of all of them, Peter had the most faith. And then, of course, Paul comes later, um, you know, and Paul has, you know, Paul was a murderer. Paul, Paul did atrocious things, um, but God still used him, took him to places unknown, took him to places where he could die, he wrote letters to different types of people. He made so much difference. God used him. And and that's where it's like I said this about a month ago or so I feel like maybe it was just a couple weeks ago but that that is where I'm like I want to be used by God the way he used Jason the way he used Tommy the, the way you know he you know when I say he, I mean Zordon, the way Zordon used them. But I want God to use me in the same way. You know, I want to reach people. I, I want to see miracles happen in people's lives. I want them to go to Jesus and, and just know his loving embrace and, and what it is, you know, to be saved and, you know, to be renewed. You know, that that's what it's about. I, I would love to be a Power Ranger for Christ. You know, miracles happen all the time. When the Rangers were down and out, Tommy was no longer Green Ranger, and, you know, they were fighting uh, the uh, 
the statue monster from White Light. They had no idea what was going on. Billy had to go, like, snoop out, and they saw they were making a new ranger. This thing had been planned. Alpha and Zordon had been making the White Ranger power, and then they abducted Tommy. And they're like, all right, here you go. You're back in the job. And he was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I thought I was done. No, no, man. We've been making this for a while. You know, Zordon Alpha did that, and then he shows up. Now, am I happy with what happened and how he kind of got pushed to the side? Uh, Jason got pushed to the side? No. But there were behind-the-scenes reasons for that. But Zordon found another way to use Tommy to help the Rangers. It was a miracle because they were losing. They were losing, and he showed up. It's like God has things planned. God has things in motion. It goes back to, to what I was talking about earlier about how he kept telling me, go to Kinsey, go to Kinsey, go to Kinsey, make your way to Kinsey. And Kinsey was like, God's telling me I got it. You know, I've got it. I'm going to help you guys out. And it's like, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Um, how how it works miracles are just crazy like let's let's look at it like this too man like the when when the thunder swords get destroyed right there's an alternative and it wasn't like oh like what do we do we got to build new zords no it was like no zord i remember the map Remember where we found the power coins? Like, this was in place the whole time. We go to Power Rangers in space when it comes to the Mega Voyager. You know, like, this was in Zordon's plan the whole time. Like, these were here just in case we ever needed them. And it's like, that's how God works, you know? You know, God works. God makes sure that you've got what you need. You know, he, he makes sure that you have what you need when you need it. It's it's crazy. I also go back to Gung Ho real quick when Jason and Tommy were fighting. You know, Zordon set that whole thing up. Titanus was was on their side from the jump, but acted like a villain so the two of them would would learn and grow. And I just remember that's when he passed the shield to Jason. Jason gave him his sword. And and it's like Zordon knew. God knows. God knows. God knows what's in our hearts. God knows what's in our minds. God knows what's going on. All you got to do is ask him, hey, look, <laughs> I need this. Or we're going through a tough time. God provide. And he's going to do it. He's going to do it every time. Not the way that we expect it to happen, but every time. Every single time. We 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 are gonna look like Kimberly when Tommy takes off the helmet and reveals that it's Tommy, you know. You know, shouldn't it pass out. Like we were shocked. I I was in tears, man. I cried again last night. Or not last night, but I cried again yesterday. When when Kenzie said, Hey, here's here's the hundred dollars. I cried. God is good, man. God is good. Like I we have to we got to look at things like that man like if if you're having a hard time like you know having a hard time looking at scripture and being like yeah but that was back then or yeah, these are stories and whatnot you got you got to look at other stories too man you know faith is spread all the way across things that we love you know th things that we enjoy um Today it was Power Rangers. It goes back to what Quentin told me. You know, God has a team for us, just like Zordon had a team, you know, for the Rangers. You know, God has a team for us. Are you, know, you looking? I'm looking at this poster in front of me with all these other teams, these all these other Rangers, and it's like they all united at one point. You know, there was I, one of the worst seasons, but you know, Mega Force man, they were like cornered. They weren't sure what to do, and then everybody showed up. You know. Dino, uh, Dino, you no know, Beast Morphers. You know there were some issues going on there. Jason showed up. Forever Red, the issues on the moon. Jason showed up. <laughs> um, there, there is so many accounts of faith in nerd culture, and we just have a hard time 
expressing it, you know, where it comes from. You know, Star Wars is one of the biggest, you know, it, it's drawn on faith. The force is faith. And um, that's what it is. And I think I think we we ignore that because we think if we believe in Christ, if we if we if we give into into anything higher than ourselves, you know, we're whack jobs. We're crazy. We we think that we have to give up everything. And that's this is not it. Here here I am, thirty one, about to be thirty two in less than a month. And I'm on a podcast preaching the word of God at the same time telling you, hey, Jason from Power Rangers is the Peter of the <laughs> is the Peter. Y'all Tommy, the Green Ranger, the White Ranger, the one you guys love, he's the Paul. You know, there there, there are just so many parallels all across it. And we, we gotta we just have to embrace it. Just because you follow Christ doesn't mean that Christ is going to tell you to give up everything. He's going to say, hey, here's your purpose. You know, use it to just to glorify me and bring people to me. Love one another. Miracles do happen. But like I always want, we're going to end this on prayer. <laughs> uh, for those who do listen to this show, um, if you've got any, you know, concerns or prayers or thoughts that you, you need to, you know, to be heard, feel free to just put them in the comments. And while we're praying here, just, you know, just pray to God, you know, that, you know, say, hey, you know, Father, I, I'm struggling today or this bill needs paid or or we're running out of food or I need gas to get to work or you know I'm tired of this job let them know dear Lord thank you for today you know we come to you and we want to thank you for everything that you do in our lives you know the the unity and the fellowship that that comes from just being in your presence I want to thank you again for the blessing that you gave Serena and I, that you allowed Kinsey to give to us. You know, that we can keep our lights on until we until we get paid or until, you know, that big YouTube check comes in or that check from the show or or you know, just just wherever you are leading us right now. You know, we just we we want to let you know that we are following you the way that you know, the best way we can. That we want to be like Peter's or like Jason's and, and follow blindly and be just like you. You know, we're imperfect and you know that. But we just pray that, you know, that you have your hands over us and you guide us and, and you just show us the directions we're supposed to take. And just, you know, keep reminding us that, you know, when we when we need something just to turn to you and not be afraid of that. Well, Jesus, I pray for anybody out there who who was lost, who has been fighting or just needs something from you that needs you and they don't know it yet. Find a way to reach them, whether it's this show, whether it's another medium, whether it's a friend. Just help them find you. We know you cause miracles. You do miracles. There are many accounts of it in the Bible. There are many accounts in it, accounts of it in everyday life. And we see it. Lord, we love you. Keep doing what you do. In your name I pray, amen. Hey, guys. Uh, again, if there's anybody out there who is just needing someone to talk to or is just needing to get something off their chest, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And um, I encourage you in whatever way you can find some sort of means of fellowship. Um, if it's through a church, great. If it's through like a club, great. If it's through like a D&D group, whatever you can. We are not meant to be alone. 
I love you guys. I'll see you in a couple of days.